Hello and welcome to the talk. And what are we talking about today? We're talking culture. Well, before you say not again, no, just relax. We're talking about another aspect of culture, not music, not dance. We're talking about languages. Now, the world over, languages are dying at an alarming rate. And this is of great concern to a lot of people. Well, some will ask, what is the importance of language? Of what relevance is it? As someone said to me, will it put food on the table? But what happened to the belief that language is an integral part of our cultural identity? Have we forgotten that? Well, I have experts in the house who will be doing the talking. Our focus on the program today is language endangerment. When we come back, we'll be looking at what importance language is, why are they becoming endangered? What can we do? Is it possible to revive them or to stop this trend? That and a whole lot more we'll be talking about today as we look at language endangerment on the talk. Once again, welcome to the program. I am Bola Oyeyemi. Okay, you're welcome back to the talk. Like I said earlier, we'll be focusing on language endangerment. And I have in the studio the experts who will be doing all the talking. From my immediate left is Professor Andrew Haruna. He is the Secretary General of the Linguistics Association of Nigeria. He's also from the University of Maiduguri. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. And sitting next to him is Professor Chinyere Ohiri Aniche. She is the President of the Linguistics Association of Nigeria. Welcome to the program, Thank Mark. you very much. Now, language endangerment. Let me first of all start from this person who said to me, of what relevance will you put food on his table, Professor Aruna? Well, of course. You know, language can fo put food on the table. As a linguist, if I'm not involved with languages, you see, I will be jobless. So I have food on my table by studying and working on languages. Now, for an artist who plays music, what does he use? It's language. So language can put food on his or her table. Now, just take a world without language. Certainly there will be no food on the table of anybody if there is no language, because you use language to communicate, you use language to pass on knowledge. And if you cannot communicate or pass on this knowledge, it means, of course, you have no food on the table. We will be all poor. Now, NTA stations like this, without language, certainly nothing will function here. So in a broad sense, without language, the essence of living is no more there. OK. Now. This friend of mine was talking not about the English language, which we all speak, but his own indigenous language. He says he's from somewhere in the East, and he says, look, do, do I need it? You know, I don't speak it at work. I don't do anything. So why should I bother with it? So, Professor Chinyiri. OK. Um. Still taking up on whether it will even put food on your table. Yes. Talk about writers. If you write in your language and sell, it's putting food on your table. People who uh, produce their school books, yeah. primers and so on, they earn a lot of money from that. The same thing, if you're a filmmaker, uh, yeah. like the people who produce all these uh, indigenous language films now, it's putting food on their table. Yoruba films, House of Films, the occasional Libu films. It's putting food on their table, even on the practical aspect yeah. of, of the word, you know. And then um, we, are, we are going back now to 
indigenous knowledge. Uh, people are beginning to find out that uh, European food or Western culture food yeah. is not very harmful to us. Maybe it's good for them. And people are now going back to the knowledge of our, our herbs, vegetables, things, going back to our indigenous food. So all those ones are things that are of, very, of great importance to the individual. The same thing to our, uh, for our indigenous medicine. You know, people are finding out uh, things that used to help people cure this and that. And all those things are of great importance. The, that knowledge is encapsulated in our indigenous languages. And, uh, you know, uh, if we do away with, with, with the indigenous languages, we find that we have lost a whole lot of thousands of years of accumulated cultural wealth. And, you know, that's very bad. Okay, so now from all of this, we understand the importance of our indigenous languages. There's so much that we can do with them. But we'll still talk a lot more about that later. So for now, let's understand exactly what we mean by language endangerment? Well, when you talk about language endangerment, yeah. you are talking about fading away or the disappearance of a whole body of knowledge, which is always found through language. Now, when languages are said to be dying, or when languages uh, are dying, yeah. we mean here that uh, there could be speakers, but there could be very few speakers. These languages are not being passed down to children. And we have different levels of language endangerment. When the language is potentially endangered, you see you have speakers, but the language is not being passed down to children, which means you have very, very few children who speak the language. Another level you can have, really the language is endangered. You see, the earlier on I said, potentially endangered. Yeah. Now it is endangered. At this stage, you only have middle-aged uh, adults who speak the language and uh, perhaps elderly people. So that kind of language or that language is really endangered. When it is seriously endangered, in this case, again, it's not a question of passing down the language to younger children, but only few senior citizens of the community speak the language. So question of passing down is no more. Then you have terminally endangered. Yeah. And this is very, very few speakers of the languages, are, of these endangered languages are left, but they are very elderly, perhaps over 60 years. Okay. Then the final is dead language, or dead languages extinct. extinct. These languages have died. And I think along the discussion, we can give you several examples in Nigeria where these languages, which are dead, the community bear the name of the language. There are people who live, who exist, bearing the name of the language, but the language is no more in existence. So ethnically, they are speakers of language A, but the language has disappeared. But today, linguistically, they speak another language. Mm. And in Nigeria, we have a lot of societies or communities where this situation exists. As a matter of fact, I will sound a warning. If you take the issue of language endangerment seriously, yeah. you have to be very careful with the community where they have lost the language. Ethnically, they bear the name of their ethnic group, yeah. but linguistically, they are something else. So if you lump them as people who belong to your own community, just because linguistically they speak your language. Yeah. You see, the ethnic sentiments will come when ethnicity is playing the trick. So language endangerment is a serious issue for us, especially in the Linguistics Association of Nigeria. And globally, mm -hmm. it's a serious matter mm -hmm. because most of the languages are fading away and body of knowledge is disappearing, which cannot be retrieved. No. Um, it's not something new. Mm. It's something that yeah. over time, yeah. many languages have died, even that's before right. our time. Yes, that's true. So why is it now such a big problem? Why are we yeah. now talking about it? Since it's something we've had, you know, languages over the mm. years, generations, and all that are gone, centuries ago that are yes. gone. Yes. So 
Why well, are we worrying about it now? Yes, um, because of the rate at which languages are now dying. You know, in the past, without all this technological advancement, yeah. globalization, global village, uh, you know, media and so on, electronic uh, means, uh, languages died but at a much, much slower rate. And um, for instance, you had uh, languages like in the Latin American, er you know, area, uh, Aztec, uh, you know, when the Spanish conquerors went there 500 years ago, because of the colonization, gradually they lost their language. And then um, you have uh, Incas, the same thing. So what, the language goes like he was saying, the name remains, but you, you hardly find the speakers. That was very slow process. But now, uh, the prediction is that out of the 7,000 world languages, if we don't take time, only 10% will survive into 22nd century. Only 10%. So that's a whole lot of languages going. And by the way, it's not only the small languages. We're also finding out that even in advanced countries, they have to take measures so that everybody's now saying, hey, I don't want my language to be part of this 90% uh, that will disappear. So even the advanced languages, everybody's doing their best to see that they protect their languages. And of course, that is why we are concerned here in Nigeria, because already mm -hmm. we have not paid attention in the past. And uh, um, we, are, we already have about 152 languages spoken by less than 5,000 people, which means they're very much on the way out. If we don't take anything to stop, they're going away. That is why, and as we have said earlier, if your language goes, that's your identity, you become a minority, you disappear sociopolitically and so on. Not to talk of the knowledge that goes, you know, that dies with it. So that's why people are now concerned that with the technological advancement and things like that, languages can now go very, very quickly. You know, uh, people... Okay, so what then will we say are the major causes of languages now, you know, disappearing at this rate? Apart from the um, technological advancement that you take, what are those causes? What would you say? Well, <laughs> you, see, you see, I like this question. Uh, if I put my Nigerian experience as a linguist, you see, the main causes are two. Yeah. There is language murder and there is language suicide. Wow. Now, when you talk about language murder, it yeah. means the state has legislated against the languages of certain members of the community. So if the national policy of education says no more language A, B, C, D, except language A as D, E, and F, you see that is language murder. Deliberately, there is a state policy which kills the languages within a particular community. But the other category, which is more serious and which is more prevalent in Nigeria is language suicide. And language suicide, you see, you have the communities, they exist, they are proud of their own identity, but then they are not proud of their own languages. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this kind yeah. of community, you see, it, they are the killers of the language. They themselves don't show any interest in developing the language. So it is a matter of attitude. Mm -hmm. Here, when there is attitudinal approach to such an issue, there is inferiority complex, some, when they change into one religion or the other, whatever religion, they feel that the religion must go with the language. And they abandon their own identity. And they get assimilated into something else. Another <laughs> will come as a result of, uh, well, what kind of policy in the sense of um, ridicule. You know, the, the, the majority groups ridicule the others. And in Nigeria, we have several of these kind of communities where a bigger language community calls the other group with a different name, a name which mm -hmm. makes them feel inferior. Yeah. But you see, this is too dangerous. And you find communities with their own language, the way they call themselves in their language is different from what the outsiders call them. And if these children of the community move to cities, they bear this label, of inferiority complex, then they are in the big cities they want to hide. So there are many causes. Yeah. Now with our policy, especially in the third world, Africa in particular, we yeah. try to encourage the major international languages, forgetting that science and wisdom 
of survival yeah. comes from our own indigenous languages. Any major language in this world, call it, name it, they do science in their own language first and translate it into the major languages. Yeah. So our technology, which is encoded in our own languages, are not being looked at. Now, once they are not being looked at seriously by the state, then you see here language attitude comes in. Now, in Nigeria, English now becomes the ladder to success. Yeah. And because of that, you find Nigerians feel that, well, what will I do with my own mother tongue? They abandoned because English to them is the window to yeah. success. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the reasons. Now, um, is it out of ignorance? Or why will somebody feel any inferiority complex about his or her language? Mm. Well, is it ignorance? <laughs> they don't understand? Or what is the, what is the problem? Yeah, yes, they unfortunately... We do in Nigeria. And don't, uh, my colleague was saying maybe some bigger groups looking down on the smaller groups. I'm yeah. telling you that even some of the bigger groups with themselves, you know, they look down on their own language. For instance, uh, talking about names, if you, people who feel that, oh, they have now become Christians like in the East, yeah. you now hear them, they don't bear any Igbo names again, they bear names like Miracle <laughs> Isaiah, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> But favor <laughs> Abraham, like that kind of a thing. So you now ask them, say, why, why? And I say, oh, okay, because of my religion. But when the people who brought religion to us yeah. were here, they didn't ask you to answer miracle Abraham, favor Isaiah, and so on. So the inferiority and the attitudinal uh, thing he's talking about has come from us. You understand? On the other hand, uh, don't forget that uh, inferiority could also have been induced. For instance, if in the school system, yeah. for long they said, don't speak your language, it's vernacular. You were fined if you spoke your, your language, if, or you know, given punishment. And believe me, that goes back to 1882. The 1882 mm -hmm. ordinance you know, for West Africa yeah. uh, said they should now use only English in schools as medium, and that they, you know, to pass the exam and so on should be in English. So since that 1882, it's more than a hundred and something years now, you know, English has certainly been given backing. And over the time, don't speak it, don't speak it. So about 150 years later, people begin to feel, oh, my language is truly inferior. But again, it's up to us because there are other cultures that have been uh, colonized, like the Asians, they were also colonized like us. Yeah. Immediately the British withdraw the French, they go back to their languages because they believed in them and you know they function in their languages. Mm -hmm. But so in our own case, it's us also that holding ourselves down, you know, feeling that our languages are inferior. Oh, if I now speak English on my children, <laughs> they say, oh, Junior doesn't speak Hebrew, Junior doesn't speak Yoruba. <laughs> And to, to start with, their names are now junior. They don't have any, <laughs> any more names. <laughs> junior becomes the Honestly, it's a big problem and it's very sad. <laughs> because you see a lot of, you know, uh, people now. Uh -huh. Even when it's, okay, there's some situations where, mm. you know, you have uh, the parents mm. from different parts of the country. Yeah. Mm. And you understand they don't speak the same language. Mm. But even... Is that an excuse for you not to even no. teach your child even any of the languages? Is it, it an excuse because it, it you're not from be the same? Excuse. Excuse. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. it should be a means of empowering the child. That's right. There, there is no problem in multilingualism. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, if you learn several languages at the rural area, which was, well, let's say, at the family level, yeah. mm -hmm. you speak your language. Then at the community level, you also speak the other language, which is perhaps the language of the wider community. Mm. You go higher, you also speak the regional language. Mm. And internationally, you speak the international language. Mm -hmm. You see, it's a question of empowerment. Yes. Yeah. But the more you reduce yourself mm. to perhaps say now for us, mm. so-called the international language, I think UNTA should also, <laughs> I mean, where English is being used, yeah. um, I think you should stop using people who come out to say, I'm going to shosh. 
<laughs> or, 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 or the fearful are, are plenty in my town. You know, and you see, but they, these are educated elites who think they should abandon the mother tongue and be more international. Mm -hmm. And in the international, instead of even educating us, they confuse us. <laughs> and that is inferiority complex. But perhaps if knowledge is passed in their own mother tongue, I'm pretty sure they could be more effective in what they do. <laughs> uh, well, but uh, when you say no, 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 when you when you say we should stop using <laughs> you know people who <laughs> fearful and children, well, this we were discussing with some people on Saturday, yeah. okay. and um, well, somebody said the Yoruba people will say shosh or whatever. Say maybe it's because of you know. Mm -hmm. the way we speak Yoruba, our language. So speak Yoruba properly and properly say, leave English. <laughs> oh, well, we, we have community stations. Okay. We have stations, even here we have language stations, Fantastic. channels That's now, That's good. where we have Hausa, Igbo, mm -hmm. and Yoruba. And yes. even other languages, you know, we do, will be accommodated in that. That's so great. we have all of that. Fantastic. But at the same time, we have English, mm -hmm. because we also realize the fact that, yes. you know, there are others who don't speak yes. any Nigerian, you know, yes, languages sure. who are watching us. Mm -hmm. So definitely, the we must sure, um, take sure. care of those uh, <laughs> people as well. Yes. But you said something about educational policy, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Which we will, you know, come back to later. Yeah. But, you know, oftentimes people blame government, government for everything. Yes. But when it comes to the individuals, like we were talking about families, mm -hmm. you know, who will refuse to speak... Um, mm -hmm whatever their language, mm. you know, to their children mm -hmm. and, and all. Mm -hmm. These, I don't know, how do we solve that kind of problem? <laughs> what do we say to them? Yes. This has nothing to do with government. Um, well, what, what is happening is that uh, we too, we linguists also bear some blame because we have not uh, put across some of these dangers to families and to parents. You have uh, a lot of blame because, <laughs> and I was telling, we don't hear about your association. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Andrew, yeah. we well, don't hear about your association. Good. Well, well, yeah, I think, uh, well, in, in, with such a fantastic program, it's not time to apportion blame. I think <laughs> NTA has done so well. <laughs> and uh, I think the task is on us. Yes. And, and I think mm -hmm. one way of getting to be heard is what you have just doing today. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Linguistics Association of Nigeria has been in existence for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, I know they have been working. If you have heard about Bangboshe, you have heard about the Linguistics Association of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Banjo. If, you, if you have heard about Banjo, Professor Banjo, mm -hmm. or Professor Elugwe, or Munzali Jibril, mm -hmm. you know, all these big names in linguistics, mm -hmm. they are the founding fathers. Mm -hmm. So, but whether the, the work they do is being appreciated is something else. Yes. Is something else. Yes. But they have done so much. These names I've mentioned, internationally, yes. they have been consultants and advisors to various international governments. Mm -hmm. But internationally, but locally. But, but now locally, locally, within nationally, now, what have they done? Now the, the, the national thing is a matter of attitude, as I have said. Yeah. Um, well, we have the linguistic map of Nigeria. You see, for a very long time, yeah. Nigerians believe that there are only three languages in Nigeria, yeah. either Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo. That's right. Well, there are over 500 different languages in the country. And when you put all these other languages, they are more in number than these three big sisters. Yeah. And one, the linguist also can be blamed mm. to a certain point. Mm. Linguists like myself. Most of us study only our languages. And when we study our languages, you see, we promote only our own ethnic language, mm. which perhaps when we try to promote it in government circles, it might be seen as just being narrow-minded. It is yeah. our own personal thing. Mm -hmm. So perhaps it could be one reason. Mm -hmm. But very few linguists specialize in languages other than They're their, their own. own. Yeah. But these few linguists also, when they try to educate the populace mm -hmm. about the language, the, its importance in education, mm -hmm. then they will be looked by the other major ethnic groups as non-native speakers, then inferiority complex come. So you see all these kind of uh, issues. So what I'm trying to say here, um, I think Nigeria has acknowledged the existence of so many languages, but perhaps our attitudinal approach to it from the colonial days is what has actually negated the best 
we could have taken out of our own languages. Well, could I just add something about um, if you if you people are married to different yeah, your backgrounds? Okay. Yes, okay. we have concrete examples of even people married to Europeans. Maybe the Nigerian man is married to a European woman yeah. or an American woman. We have concrete examples. Once the father from birth speaks his language to the children, yeah. the children pick it up. And usually that encourages even the woman, the wife, mm -hmm. to you know, learn the language, you know, the language and you know, communicate. And even if you are married to another Nigerian from a different background, there are also cases we know where you know you, uh, where the father and the mother is, and as he said within the community, it can be worked out. The the problem that happens is even when they are married to the same people of the same tribe, yes. of the same ethnic group, mm -hmm. but those are, you know they have that attitude. Oh, I don't want my child to speak uh, this and that language. Then they discourage the children or even warn uh, visitors. Don't speak that language to my child. Oh. I don't. You know that happens. They, you know they warn people. So don't speak. Uh, their reason, oh, it will confuse their brain. Hmm. Eh, hey, it will confuse, confuse their brain. Their brain. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you, the parent, your brains were not confused. It was, uh, well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it wasn't confused yeah. <laughs> because you're a lawyer, you're an engineer, you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. You speak your language, speak English, and you are saying uh, your child now the brain will be confused. How is that possible? So maybe they are, uh, the brain of the parents is, you know, is confused. And that is why they're that thinking that way. That is why you that know they're all thinking that way, way you know? Mm -hmm. So it, do, it, it really doesn't make sense. It's a very sad situation mm. and um, I just, I, I, don't know, I don't know what to, you know, <laughs> say of that, you know, when people think yes. the, that way. Mm. But, well, I've been talking with Professors Chin Yere Aniche and Professor Andrew Haruna of the Linguistics Association of Nigeria. We'll take a break now, and when we come back, we'll now look at the Nigerian situation. Your weekend starts right here on the sport. Watch your weekend at this times on NTAE. Welcome back to the talk. I still have with me professors Andrew Aruna and Chinyere Aniche of the Linguistics Association of Nigeria. And we're talking about language endangerment. Now we've looked at what's happening the world over as far as language endangerment is concerned. We've talked a, a bit about attitude of Nigerians to their, you know, languages. But now we want to look at the situation as far as endangerment is concerned in Nigeria. How many languages are dead? How many are the point of dying? And what can we do to revive these languages, if at all we can do that? Professor Andrew, where do well, we stand in Nigeria? <laughs> Well, our situation is just pathetic, wow. I must say. Pathetic? Pathetic, yes. Because at the rate at which there is deforestation of the Nigerian landscape is more than the danger of the ozone layer wow. we talk about. Now, the ozone that layer... That is as far as language is as concerned. As far as language is concerned. <laughs> now, it, permit me to use, you know, as a teacher, yeah. I want to visualize everything so that my or our viewers 
we'll see what actually we are talking about. Okay. Th this is the country Nigeria. Yeah. This is the linguistic map of Nigeria with over 500 languages. Okay. Now, within these languages, politically, we know we have the East, the West, and the North, and we often define the political life of the country along this line. Yeah. This is grossly, you know, uh, mm -hmm. inadequate. Mm -hmm. Now, look at these languages. Look at the northern part of Nigeria. You see, from Igala here, yeah. Gede, coming up, Nupe, all this. This is what you call northern part of Nigeria. And northern part of Nigeria has over three different, 300 different linguistic groups. And here we mean different cultures, yeah. different worldview, different gods, different way of understanding the environment. Yeah. Now, with the total erosion of languages, you see a lot of mm. cultures have melted into bigger communities. Yeah. Mm. Now, today, we think these communities, because they speak our languages, Mm -hmm. The languages of the wider community, yeah. they have already been assimilated into us. But it's not quite like mm. that. Now, if you look at this region, yeah. there are over 60 different languages which are under just 5,000 speakers. But the population, if you mm. look at by census, they will be running into maybe a million. <laughs> okay? And so, you say we have... Just over 5,000? 5,000, 5, some even 500. We now have... Speaking of 60 different, different languages. Different ethnic groups. Wow. Now there are some. I'm working on a language where there's only one speaker, and she's <laughs> over 80 years old. She's about 85 years old. I cannot interview her for more than 30 minutes. She falls asleep. <laughs> if she dies, I will put an announcement over NTA if you could subsidize this. And I'll be sure <laughs> Of, of, of this language, because it has disappeared from the surface of the earth. Mm. And in the middle belt part of the country, yeah. it's so peculiar, you know, serious. You may even go into the bigger languages. They sing today, some of the wider regional languages, when they sing, they sing from the moon. Mm. It doesn't have any flavor of the local yeah. music we know. Yeah. They are also in danger. If the language is not in danger, the culture is in danger. Mm. So it's not a question of the minority groups. So I am presenting this map for our viewers to know how serious the situation is. In the next 100 years, perhaps, the languages that will remain in Nigeria will be very few. Mm -hmm. The rest have been like the assimilated next centenary. And, they, and they have died. Yeah. And which means a whole body of knowledge has gone forever, yeah. which cannot be retrieved. Yeah. It's very important because if we are talking about a uh, centenary yeah. this year, and you imagine that uh, last, uh, in the 19th century, coming to amalgamation in 1914, there were all those languages were vibrant. Now we are saying that about 152 out of the 500 are already on their way out. Yeah. And even the bigger ones, because yeah. they are not speaking it to their children, in the next two, two, two three generations, that is 50 to 75 years' time, they too will be on, you know, out. So by the time you do the next centenary, if you don't take time, there'll be very, very few anything about Nigerian languages. So maybe we should have all been assimilated into English, which is what many people want to be. They want to be Oyibo people. You know, so it would have, it would have happened. But you know, the question for us is this, yeah. do we really want that? Is that what we want? But seriously, these languages are going down. And he says, you know, some are, of course, more endangered than others. Yeah. But the big ones, Ibo Yoruba, maybe not Hausa, but Hausa has been kept up because of its spread from Niger, Nigeria, Chad. Where else is it spread? Even yeah. some parts of Sudan. Yeah. So it has a good spread. But these ones that don't have a good spread, you know, and they're not teaching it to their children, they're not passing it on. After two or three generations, when those children become parents, nothing. Now, for the 85-year-old woman, you say, yeah. does she have children? Well, she has children. They, they exist, don't speak. But they don't speak the language. So this is the situation with many of the ethnic groups yeah. that we have today. And I mentioned earlier, ethnically they exist, but linguistically they are something else. Mm -hmm. You see, even in the major groups, yeah. even in the major groups, Take, for example, uh, in, in, in the northern part of Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of people 
will speak these languages by color, we call them Chadic languages. Now, there are a lot of people who speak Hausa, but ethnically, ethnically they are not Hausas. Now, when you give them a form to feel, they will feel my ethnic group is X, Y, Z. <laughs> Which language, language do you speak? They put Hausa. Now, you see, it's very confusing. If one is not a linguist to be able to ask the right question, now, it is common all over the place. Not only with Hausa, Yoruba also, you mm -hmm. get the same thing. Yeah. Igbo, you get the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you come to the mid, uh, Middle Belt, other bigger ethnic groups of the region, they also have similar situations. Yes. So, so, so what we are saying here, in the Nigerian linguistic landscape, we should not be deceived that our languages are not dying based just because they are being spoken. You see, orality is good. If you want to maintain or keep your language, you've got to speak it. But at the same time, documentation is important because it is there. You preserve the knowledge of that community without getting it being eroded. So uh, we, we shouldn't have the false feeling. Even the big three, Yoruba, Hausa, yeah. Igbo, mm. they are under threat. They are. They, they are they, under they, threat. They, they are. How, how many speak good Igbo today? without mixing it with English <laughs> words. How many of you speak good Yoruba? You see, I was so happy, uh, a, uh, a university lecture, yeah. which we call, uh, you know, when a professor is to give an inaugural lecture. Yeah. An inaugural lecture for the first time was given in Yoruba language. Mm. Mm. This year? See, this year. At Takumba? Good. Mm. And that is Michael Adjassin <laughs> okay. University, yes. which is a fantastic thing. Mm. Which means it can she, be even be used. It can be used. Yeah. Again, research was done, mm -hmm. you know, by Nigerian linguists, yeah. where children were taught with Yoruba language mm -hmm. from Fafu primary women. one right to yes. seven. The seventies. The second, the seventies, mm -hmm. and English was taught to them only as a medium subject. As a subject. Mm -hmm. Whereas Yoruba was used as a medium of mathematics, oh, yeah. science, and what have you. Yeah. Then another group, they had English as a medium mm. and also as subject. Mm. When they wrote the Waek, mm. those who had Yoruba as a medium of instruction, yeah. they top yes. the scale. Mm. You see, they top the scale. Yeah. And you can easily mm. understand why this is so. Before you enter primary six, yeah. you, you had already spent six years at home mm -hmm. and you have acquired the knowledge of all the plants and all the animals and what have you which mm -hmm. you start in basic science or mm -hmm. social sciences but those who came in and started with english mm -hmm. you have shut down this knowledge six years acquired from the mother from the environment mm -hmm. from the father yeah. and they mm -hmm. will start learning the snow mm -hmm. and they have never seen the snow <laughs> okay or oh, your sin will be as white as snow <laughs> and you have never seen one Okay, perhaps if we put up, you know, these are some of the problems. Yes. We, we, so, we how do we solve this problem? Research is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Research. I was involved with my colleagues in the Linguistics Association of Nigeria mm -hmm. two years ago yeah. with the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Tourism. And I have the research proposal here. We mapping and documentation of Nigerian languages. Yeah. We wrote a fantastic proposal, which I can let you have. But again, as usual, everything goes. The, the, no, but it so what we mean here is research, is. which is very important. The ministry mm -hmm. understood the importance of research. Nigerian academics also have to partner with government institutions to, to succeed. Now, OK, wait. when we do the research, mm -hmm. that will not bring back these languages. Mm -mm. But it will help us to understand what is happening, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, or, yes. now, but we've done the research. It is there. This mm -hmm. is the problem. This is the situation. Mm -hmm. This is what is going on. So how do we now reverse that trend to say, okay, to get people speaking the languages well, again, to make sure mm -hmm. that they don't all die out? Well, let me, let me say something here. We, we have... Earlier mentioned that uh, yes. language endangerment is also a worldwide phenomenon. Yes. And we say that in the old days, uh, if you go to UK, you see that uh, Irish, uh, Scottish, Welsh, 
also got eroded over 500 years when English overtook them. And they, or they, otherwise, they used to have their own languages. But if you go to the research today, to the, to the internet, you'll see, for instance, that uh, since uh, in the uh, early last century, they started striving to reteach their languages. Even just today, I was reading about um, one man, some, some uh, Alfonso something, Corsican, the Corsican, Corsican of the, languages. yes, mm -hmm. the, a member of European Parliament, mm -hmm. you know, who is going to present a draft report mm -hmm. tomorrow, 23rd mm -hmm. years, yes. about their, you know, language right. dying, being um, overtaken by the, mm -hmm. you know, French um, language. So yes. it's an ongoing, people are it's, now it's, beginning yes. to be aware of this mm -hmm. thing and they're trying to do something, something. about it. Yes, yes. So how do we also well, now that's that's what I'm saying because now? for instance uh, the the measures the Irish took yes. since around the uh, be, you know uh, beginning of the 20th century uh, they made sure it became compulsory in schools they put a lot of it on media they encouraged the parents to also be part of the learning process because many of the parents at the time didn't even know it because they had lost. I think, I think at the time about uh, less than even 3% of the population spoke Irish. But today, because of that 100 year effort, uh, today the report is that 90% uh, of Irish people are beginning to speak Irish. The same thing, the population that speaks Welsh is also going up. In other words, if you make the effort, yeah. and we are not even the bad situation that those people are. Mm -hmm. Because our adult population solidly speaks uh, their language. By the way, nobody wants their language to die because when we do survey and we ask them, ah, do you know that uh, in, in 100 years time your language could <laughs> die? Say, ah, God forbid, <laughs> I reject it in Jesus' name, <laughs> by fire, by this and that. Uh, please oh, take it easy. <laughs> Is it Jesus that will come and speak your language for you? Please, you understand? So it's just that they don't understand. If we, the people, we, the government, want these languages to be revived or to stand, yes. we can do many things, programs. Okay. Your association, mm -hmm. um, are you working with the um, education, Federal Ministry of Education? Because I think you need to work together, they need to understand and, you know, do something about this from the schools. Yeah. It should start from there. I think it is not that they don't understand, yeah. if I must correct well, that. There's just not they the say the various ministries some. and government parastatals yeah. understands, and they like it, but the political will to make it work <laughs> is just not there. You see, it's just a question of a statement of, uh, you know, uh, mm. if I might say, political statement for self-esteem. But once it comes to implementation, Everybody plays a lukewarm attitude towards it. Yeah. Now, perhaps in the Nigerian context, yeah. if some some of the big ethnic groups, mm -hmm. they, let me sound away, they shouldn't is accuse the Linguistics Association of Nigeria, <laughs> or some of us when we encourage the growth or the development of the other languages, because they might start thinking that, oh, this is linguistic irredentism. We are trying to whip on sentiments and then we instead of unity we want to divide no no, no not that's that. not the point we're doing language is beyond political sentiments just like education is so the ministry of education understands this very well but what i must say is the political will to make it work is yeah, what is, i yeah. can say to my own point of view is yeah. lacking yeah. we have the N N -E -R -D -C yeah. Yeah. to develop the languages. Mm -hmm. They make orthographies, primers, and what have you. Now, if these things have been produced, there should be a sanction for any school that does not use these things. In Nigeria, we have the law. You can teach the mother tongue at the primary school level yeah. or at the secondary, yeah. uh, you know, to university, uh, based on the policy. Yes. It's a multilingual policy. No language is discriminated against. That's right. But there is no sanction mm -hmm. for not passing a Nigerian language before getting to the university. So one crime we are doing is to be admitted in the Nigerian university, you need a credit in English. So if you have a credit in, in Yoruba and you have F in English, you will not be admitted. So why is the incentive <laughs> for a Nigerian child to learn that? To learn. So you see, this is a policy matter. 
This is a policy matter. Yeah. But we can develop our languages only if there are incentives like this. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is just one area. And, okay, and uh, so. to add to what he said, yeah. um, it's true, since 1977, yes. the National Policy on Education said, teach every child their own, and in addition, you're a Bible house. But that other one of teach everybody their own, quite frankly, hardly anybody did yeah. that. So the political will was not there because they think, oh, how do we produce primers or orthography for so many languages? But we have a light under the tunnel because okay. many of the governments are beginning to understand okay. that they have to take uh, their own destiny in oh, their hands. And we can cite here for Bielsa, fantastic. Okay. Since uh, this last year, they have put a law now they have a ministry for Ijo national affairs oh, and cool. languages. Cool. And uh, th uh, this year we went for UNESCO mother language yes. uh, pr program there. They now made Ijo compulsory, right from nursery, primary, junior, secondary, oh, provided good. orthographies, providing books, and so on, put it on radio that and TV. Gives us hope. Eh? It gives hope. us hope. It gives us hope because at least they have understood that yes. everybody, your community, the government, you now have to take your own language in hand. You don't wait for FEDRA. Yes. FEDRA cannot yes. do. Yeah. But once you start, you will be surprised many people will help. And we have individuals too. We have individuals who've taken their own community languages in hand. They're promoting it, they're spending money, they're doing whatever it is. I think it's a lot that individuals need to do. Need individuals to do are doing it. it. A few are doing do it, but it. you know, uh, each, more could do it, but at yeah. least that's more encouraging than formally if you say anything in Nigerian language. Oh, those primitive languages, ah, don't bother yeah, us. But now the attitude language. is gradually changing. <laughs> and to add that a little bit with regard to the language situation at the primary level, yes. mm. you see, the federal government is supporting, you saw the Nigerian languages in terms of its policy. Yes. But you see, at the primary and the kindergarten, mm. these are run mainly by private individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Now it is there, you'll find that children send, parents send their children from day one. <laughs> Mm -hmm. to learn a foreign language rather than the Nigerian language. Yes. So this also mitigates gov federal government's on approach. Yes. <laughs> you see. And while we are here maybe not appreciating, mm. you know, what we have. Yes. Nigerian languages are being taught outside. Oh, course, yes. That's what I, I spent yes. over 15 years teaching Nigerian languages abroad. Mm -hmm. I taught it in the UK, in Germany, and I still have exchange program from mm -hmm. Europe. Yeah. For uh, Europeans coming here to learn Nigerian languages. Yes. Yeah. And here we are, <laughs> not appreciating it, thinking it's primitive. No, 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 no. Um, it's not primitive because not primitive. do you know something? That's what people think. No. That's why they don't want their children to just yeah, learn English. It's, that, that's uh, no, no, no. What? It's not so because it's the Europeans and uh, uh, Americans and Russians, everybody yeah. that are now learning these Nigerian languages. If yes. you go to US, there's a very vibrant. A uh, very vibrant program of Nigerian languages in many of the universities. You understand? Americans studying them. The same as in Europe, the same as in uh, Britain. In fact, uh, I, I can tell you there was a, a time some German ladies, young girls, came to the University of Lagos, blue eyed, uh, blonde girls, and were speaking perfect Yoruba, perfect Tibo. Everyone said, hey? Say, yes, they are learning them. They yeah, find they, it of the interest. Chinese, of do. The it's, Chinese they are learning. Do how sad. The other time we went to China, we went to their radio okay. station. Oh. You find them, they you broadcast, know? you know. Well, that's Hausa right. They have right. Hausa names so. and all that. They, they are learning so why them. why won't we? And you know, uh, because, you know, one thing is, uh, the world is very worried that we should lose trend of the, lingu the linguistic potentials of our, our languages. For instance, there are many features in these languages which are not European languages, and good people want to know. For instance, um, the you know a class non-class system. You know, yeah. there's non-class system. They have plural, singular, uh, like in Ijo. You, you have a, uh, if you ha make a sentence, yes. it will tell you whether it's talking about a woman, an inanimate object, and things like that. Even in the very small ones. So those those things are of importance to the world. They want to know uh, the differences in the world languages. Then, of course, when you want to uh, recreate African history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need these are languages. For instance, if you check our word list, you see that many of the words in Nigeria are as far down as South Africa, like words for 
you know, bear, bear child, could be mm -hmm. and all that one mm -hmm. die, you know. Mm -hmm. So that in uh, South Africa language, so that all over the place, from Russia in Sokoto to going down to, well, to Yoruba, to South Africa. So when we are now asking, how did these things happen? What are the migrating so, patterns? Our time is up, oh, but um, just um, a final word from you, um, Professor Andrew. What would you say? Well, I think uh, community speakers, I, I hold them responsible if their language is done. Because they are the custodians of the language, and for it to survive, they must speak it. We as uh, language experts, we are to assist them to make it survive. No okay. matter the grammar we make, the dictionaries we produce, it's in it's their easy. hands. It's, but the okay. fate of the language is Professor in their hands. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I feel very strongly that the example of Baisa state government should be taken by every government. Please do something. Start teaching your languages in your schools. And especially the federal government should uh, make sure that the policy that you put down is not just put down, it's implemented so that uh, everybody uh, is taught their language as the policy demands. Well, on that note, I say thank you very much for coming on the talk and really talking the talk to us today. Now, it's, um, it's alarming, you know, the statistics you gave us about um, languages dying in Nigeria. We hope they won't die. We hope that people will do something. We hope that parents will teach their children their languages. I mean, you should be proud of your languages. After all, your parents taught you, mm -hmm. so why would you not want to teach your children? Mm -hmm. So please, let us do something and make sure. I mean, it's our pride. It's our heritage. And we shouldn't just let it die. Thank you very much for being a part of the talk today. We'll see you again some other time. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thank you. Thank you.